modeling can can be and uh, it's like a strange area or more difficult area and uh, uh, as scientists uh, modeling we used to understand the mechanism of, of uh, how the birds use the nutrient and try to develop uh, transform these phenomenons transform the, the biological phenomenons into mathematical models trying to predict or describe uh, the metabolism or the physiology of the animal. This is basically a modeling. Modeling is use mathematical functions to understand how the animal use the nutrients or the feeds and development uh, tools to, to, perf- uh, to develop nutritional uh, programs or uh, nutritional requirements. Hello and welcome to the another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host, Fatima Adekari from Mississippi State University, with the goal of bringing you latest and greatest research um, to the audience. Today we have a um, very exciting topic to discuss. We have Dr. Ronnie Riveros from Sao Paulo University in Brazil. Dr. Riveros is a researcher in poultry nutrition, um, has been there for a few years, and he's going to share about Today, the importance of modeling tools, especially in the nutrition field, and how we go from there. Dr. Ravaros, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Patrina. And, uh, thank you for the invitation and have this opportunity to share a little about the um, research line. You're welcome, and we're glad to have you. In uh, for the next nine minutes, we're gonna talk about you know a very uh, I, I guess in a, a layman term to understand uh, what we can, what is there and what is, uh, what are the things that you're working on, what you're working on and how we can be benefited as uh, practically for our students, um, poultry sectors of, you know, whoever is involved in different feeding programs um, and different side of the nutrition. So here um, I would like to start with a little bit of background, if you can talk about what work you do currently. Yes, I'm uh, originally I'm from Peru. Uh, I was formed in animal science in Peru in the uh, Universidad de La Molina in Peru. And uh, after my my undergraduate, uh, after, after my formation, I was moved to Brazil to start my master in animal science also, and continued with a um, PhD in animal science. And I finished it two years ago around. And I started as a research in, in Brazil, in the Sao Paulo State University, and as postdoc position. And uh, on the last year, I received an opportunity to uh, do an uh, research, uh, to do an research visit at in in Rai in France. I currently am in France. Uh, development uh, a little more about uh, modeling that is a fantastic area that I, I'm definitely. Uh, uh, dedicated more of, of uh, more part of my research line. Oh, thank you, excellent. So you are in France right now in a process of uh, as a visiting scholar and for a process of learning this uh, the things uh, there in France. Um, that's great. So so I would like to ask. Um, we're going to start here with the basic questions. What is a nutritional modeling, and how it can be implemented? Um, for example, in a practical diet formulation. Yes, uh, this is a uh, very good question because uh, modeling can can be and uh, sound like a strange area or more difficult area. And uh, uh, as scientists, uh, modeling we used to understand the mechanisms of, of uh, how the birds use the nutrient and try to develop uh, transform these phenomenons, transform the the biological phenomenons into mathematical models trying to predict or describe uh, the metabolism or the physiology of the animal. This is basically a modeling. Modeling is use mathematical functions to understand how the animal use the nutrients or the feeds and development uh, tools to to, perf- uh, to develop nutritional uh, programs or uh, nutritional requirements. Basically, we uh, we actually actually in the as nutritionists nutritionists we use models to uh, develop the uh, feed tables or the uh, 
genetic guideline recommendations to predict how the animal growth in 2042 days or uh, 56 days. And uh, actually, we use models. So, uh, as uh, broiler chickens grow, it's very fast and by, very dynamic. Dynamic. We don't show exactly who who is uh, who is the the mechanisms of of uh, to describe the mechanisms how the birds growth. Uh, basically, this is the practical application to development uh, uh, that the. the Tables like a Brazilian tables uh, for poultry and swine, or the NRC in swine, for example, is used uh, the models and uh, other tables, uh, referential tables for nutritionists. Excellent. So, yeah, you mentioned about to, the main goal here is to optimize the animal performance. Uh, but um, how much do you take on with this kind of modeling? You know, economic as well as environmental, and going a little bit on the sustainability side of things. Um, you know, is it? Uh, are we there yet? Are we thinking beyond the performance and uh, just kind of incorporating the sustainability in our uh, formulation? That the model we're going to use, the data we're going to use, or are these are they the combination of both? Can you tell about those? Uh, as we know, the, the uh, birds, uh, broiler chickens specifically, is very, very, uh, very efficient uh, species. They grow from, uh, for example, for, for 14 grams, 45 grams at hatch, pass to uh, uh, close than four kilos in just in 42 days. It's, it's, it's a very fast growth. It's a very fast, uh, uh, very efficient species to use the feeds. Uh, in this way, we can think that uh, the, we, we need to to be more accurate on uh, development tools to uh, to have and uh, numbers. I mean, uh, I mean numbers as uh, nutritional requirements for energy and amino acids more efficiently. And uh, in the recent time, we have another challenge, for example, the sanitary conditions, the uh, heat, heat stress challenge, and also the, the competition with uh, foods, uh, with human foods, for example, soybean meals and uh, corn have these competitions. And in the recent years, we have this challenge and we need to uh, develop tools to be more efficient on the utilizations not just for have a very fast growth beers, but also to use more efficiently the sources, the feeds. And in this way, modeling, we can uh, help us to understand how the animal use the feeds and who is the mechanism involved on this efficient utilization of feeds. Also, we can implement it, uh, new uh, feed staff, local or regional ingredients, and uh, understand how the animal, if we change core by uh, sorghum or by other local uh, feed staff, how the birds can use these uh, ingredients, also the nutrients involved in these ingredients. And we, we work in this line as modeling, uh, trying to be more accurate and more precise on understand how the beers use the nutrients and how this impact on performance response. Excellent. So with these models that we and you mentioned about some of these um, things that we need we use to implement the model. So that's great. And with this thing, you know, what is the principal limitation that you think that could be used in this model in poultry nutrition? Yes, uh, a long time ago, maybe uh, I can say the principal limitation is the data. But actually, we have a lot of data, a lot of metadata. Yeah, I agree. And uh, more actually, we have the intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence tools that help us on processing this data. Um, uh, but I think that uh, we needs more professionals involved with in modeling. And for example, just an example, uh, the works uh, published, the paper published on the journals, the most part on uh, uh, NR, uh, nutrient requirements or NR requirements is based on um, empirical models, more simple models. And actually, we need more dynamic models, models that can be predict the requirement or energy utilization per day 
uh, in going to the uh, precision feeding systems. And in this way, I think that uh, probably the limitation is that have more. Uh, uh, we need to form more professionals in in modeling. In and, and the other part also is uh, we need a multidisciplinary action. We need statistics, uh, and we need mathematics, and we need biologists. We need nutritionists to integrate it, all that and generate it, uh, more efficient tools. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, the ASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. So thank you for educating us in the modeling side and what are the limitations and what are the, some of the things that we can use to implement these models in poultry nutrition. I know you mentioned a couple of times in your talk about net energy system, and I would like to ask, leave this today's episode with one question at the end, potentially our last questions about the net energy system and how are you using this net energy system or the data that you have driven? from this system or analysis in your modeling. Can you tell about that? Yes, uh, this is a, a, a recently we started on Sao Paulo uh, State University. We start to work on net energy, but we know also that on Arkansas University in United States, on uh, in Australia and the New England University, and uh, also uh, Doctor Jean Noblet that work in the same way. This is very fantastic with, because different laboratories is working the same way, trying to develop um, and implementing net energy on the pool. And the poultry nutrition. This is very interesting and very good. I think um, we work uh, in Sao Paulo State University, we work in collaboration with uh, Professor Jan Novlet. And um, the, uh, at, the, at the moment, I think this is a system under development. We are on, on understanding uh, steps. We are uh, trying to, to, to have. M- Firstly, have more data and also uh, a better understanding about the energy metabolism of, of the beards and uh, some equation was development uh, using modeling also. And uh, I think in, in couple of years, we can have a very strong system that can help us on, on, on implementing net energy. And just finish, for finishing, uh, I want to say that net energy and modeling, I think, is the same way to develop a more sustainable nutrition because both trying to uh, to uh, combine, combining both, we ca- we trying to understand better and more efficient system. And this is this is very good, and maybe I think at the moment some nutrition is resistant for for the for moving on net energy. But I think in a couple of years we can we can have a very strong system. Excellent, Dr. Riveros. Um, again, um, thank you for coming to our episode today and talking and sharing about things about nutritional modeling. Um, thank you again for a different time zone in France and talking um, and having a time for us to talk in this nutrition black belt. Um, thank you all for who watched us. Uh, I had today Dr. Ronnie Riveros. He's a researcher in poultry nutrition at Sao Paulo University in Brazil, and currently he is doing a visiting scholar in France. Um, thank you again, and I hope to learn more about this modeling and energy, especially in our new episode in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.